Almighty Most High in Christ. Bless. Yeah, we see each other again another day. Our praises for life on earth. Um, we hear the uh, honor of marriage between Eladar and his wife, Rebecca. Our praises. Uh, marriage is honorable in the sight of the Lord. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of scriptures. Uh, everybody should be aware of. Uh, we just want to make sure we do all things in decently in order. Make sure everybody understands what, what is the purpose of marriage. Okay, and uh, what what we uh, the, those that don't have a wife, what to uh, expect when getting married, how to become a husband, how to become a wife. So all praises to the Most High for this union together. All praises to the Most High, the angels and the Most High smiling at this thing. All praises. A lot of the world they ain't doing this right. Okay, they're marrying for the wrong reason, but this is in the, this is honorable in the sight of God. All praises. Um, okay. uh, we're going to open up uh, with Hebrews chapter 13. Book of Hebrews chapter 13. Book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. The Bible says marriage is honorable in all. Everything that he has created, he looked at marriage and said that is honorable in everything that I've seen. That's why you see oftentimes the Most High give up uh, when he gives an analogy. He compares it unto a marriage because there's no other bond like unto a marriage, like when we deal with the laws of sacrifice. Okay, when you say when we broke or uh, when we fell off from the uh, laws of sacrifice, it was like uh, departing, uh, departing from our husband, which we divorce. Okay, when the, the union between the nation of Israel and Christ is like a marriage. And when we sin uh, between God and the, um, between the Most High God and the Israelites, and when we sin, He divorces, therefore ushering in Jesus Christ. Okay, every time he, God gives an analogy, he compares it unto a marriage. He said marriage, out of everything that he's created, one of them that he's created, is honorable and all, especially when it's done right. Read on. Let your conversation... Read it again. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled. How? Because that is his wife, and that is her husband. Okay, we read the book of Proverbs. It, uh, I believe it's Proverbs chapter 21. It goes into saying that what, matter of fact, let's get there real quick. Let's explain what this is saying. The bed is undefiled. For one, it goes into the bed being not defiled because that is his wife. Okay, uh, when a man is a spouse to a wife, he cannot sleep with nobody other than his wife. That is his wife. Um, another part of that understanding of what this bed under file means, let's get this, the book of Proverbs, this will explain it. You know what I want? Um, let me find it real quick. I believe it's in 30, chapter 30. Chapter 30, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 18. There be three things which are too wonderful for me. There be two. There be three things that are too wonderful for me, meaning above his understanding. Read on. Yea, four which I know not, but the fourth one are too wonderful for me. But the fourth one, meaning that he, he found that thing wonderful to uh, look at. But the fourth one, that one, I do not understand. What is that? Read on. The way of an eagle in the air. That thing is wonderful. The way of an eagle in the air. How it soars through the air and have no care. It's just as it does what it was created to do. Read on. The way of a serpent upon a rock. Uh huh. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. Here's the fourth one. Read on. And the way of a man with a maid. That one is the fourth one which he said, I know not. Long as it's between him and his wife, God said, that thing is, I know not. That's his wife. He do what he want with his wife, likewise with her husband. That's the thing, that thing that the Most High God said, I know not. That's when it goes back to the bed being undefiled. That is his marriage, okay? Let's go back to that in the book of Hebrews. Everybody understand that in the men's side? You understand? Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. 
Only time it get to uh, being unlawful if you know try to switch roles where a woman is dressing up like a male a male cop meal. You know? All that stuff ain't supposed to be going on. Y'all say y'all stay in y'all y'all in y'all you protocols when it, when it comes to that stuff. All right. Let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter thirteen no verse four. Dressing up like no football player and all this stuff. All right. <laughs> Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's something outside of marriage. When it comes to whoremonger and being an adulterer, God said, a person like that, a spirit like that, God will judge. Meaning there's, there's torment, death and torment, okay? Um, next one, Cap, go ahead and bring this one out. And like why we would take turns on so I'm understanding on this. Okay. Get, I'm going to take it back to the beginning real quick. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. God said it's not good for us as men to be alone. Everybody in the world needs somebody. And it's a beautiful thing when we find that somebody that God made for us. So in the beginning, God said he's going to make us a help meet. What does that mean? A help meet. Brother Elder Don. Uh, a help meet is the spouse that is supposed to um, be a pillar to her husband. Pillar of strength to her husband. It's, it, yeah. it's saying a good help. Somebody that's good to help that man. That's what the Most High has planned for us in a wife. A sister that is good for us, to help us to be the best that we can be. Everybody understand that? So when you look for a wife, you look for a sister that you know is able and capable of helping you to be the best that you can be. That's why it tells us all the time, and that's why we talk about it all the time, that we're supposed to prove a friend. There's no closer friend to you than your wife. No closer friend to you than your wife. So read that again. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. Yeah, hold on. Let's read that, please. Um, check, check, check. Reading um, the definition from help, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It says help to do something that make to do something that makes it easier for someone to deal with a problem, to aid, assist someone, assist someone, to make something less severe, to give yourself, to give assistance, to support. Perfect. Sister uh, Rebecca, scoot over a little bit so I can see you. I'm looking at the flowers. So do you understand what that means? As a help me. What you're supposed to be for him. His support. His support. Not his albatross. Not his arguer. But his support. You understand? You accept your role as that, right? Alright. All praises. Verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. So at the point of marriage, symbolically, now y'all are no longer two separate individuals. Y'all one flesh. Y'all the same individual. Anything that happens with you affects her. Anything that happens with you affects him. No more selfishness. Y'all got to remember. And y'all, we're going through this right now, and I, hopefully y'all already understand that. But we go through these scriptures to make sure that everybody understands and they confess so in front of the whole congregation, we know that you understand that, right? So if you mess up, who does it affect? It affects her as well. And if you're getting on his nerves, who does it affect? 
it affects him. Y'all one flesh. From this point on, y'all been one flesh, but we making it official right now. Under the witnesses in the church and under God being our witness. Y'all one flesh. Give me Matthew chapter 19. Start at verse 5. Start at verse 4. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave their father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Exactly. So we understand that y'all are one flesh. It's no longer about your parents and your family. It's no longer about your parents and your family. It's about you two being one flesh. It's about you and your children and the life that y'all building together now that is true under Christ. Read on. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And don't let anybody come in between your marriage. As long as both of y'all in the commandments, as long as both of y'all believe in the keeping of God's commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ, don't let anybody come in between your marriage. Because y'all are one flesh now. Y'all, when it's all said and done, when everybody goes home, y'all go home together. When everybody's handling their own business, y'all's business is together. Y'all understand that? Yes. Don't let anybody come to you and separate you from your wife. As long as you believe that she keeps God's commandments and she's in the spirit of Christ, don't let anybody come to you, come between your marriage. And the same with you. Don't let a sister get in your ear. Don't let a brother get in your ear. Y'all are one. Y'all protect each other. Y'all the la y'all family. Y'all the last line of defense when it comes to this world. You understand? Yes. Read on. Verse 7. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Read on. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whosoever marrieth which is put away, married her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So y'all understand, there's no, there's no reason for you to put her away unless she cheats on you. You understand, if y'all separate for whatever reason, if she doesn't cheat on you, y'all locked, y'all bonded forever. You just gotta be by yourself. And the only way for you to put him away, and we'll get into it in a minute, I'm sure one of the captains go through it, is what? What's the only way you can put him away? What's the only way that you can leave him alone and marry somebody else? Excuse me? Let me speak on the mic. If he dies? If he dies. Absolutely. So what happens if he messes up and he, and he, and he cheats on you? A lot of sisters don't know this. This is the Bible. What happens if he messes up and he cheats on you? What do you do? I'm supposed to just stay by myself. Huh? I'm supposed to just stay by myself. Your option is if you leave him, you stay by yourself until he dies. Or you can forgive him. If he repents, y'all can reconcile. If he repents and, and realizes the error in his ways, y'all can reconcile. But if you can never forgive him, you're by yourself for the rest of your life. And if you get with somebody else, what is that called? If he doesn't die and you get with somebody else because you feel like he cheated on me, I'm going to go and be happy. What is that called? Huh? Adultery. Adultery, absolutely. And you won't be right with God until you stop that and continue to be by yourself as long as he's alive. You understand? All right, Captain. Grab um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We'll touch a different aspect. Because um, y'all was together before this truth, right? Y'all didn't beat each other. No, we was together before the before truth. truth. Yes. So being before this truth, y'all have history together. Yes. There's a certain way you carried yourself be before this understanding, a certain way you carried yourself before this understanding. I want to touch this real quick. This is very important with folks who was married and together before they knew God's laws and commandments, right? Read that. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse Second 17. Corinthians 5, 17. Oh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Read again. 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ. So y'all are new in Christ. Penny, you understand that you Israel, that you must keep these commandments of faith in him. So y'all are new. It's a fresh start. Not only in this walk, but also in your marriage. Because now you're actually learning how to be a husband. Actually learning how to be a wife. According to God, right? So read on. He is a new creature. He's a new creature. Restart, refresh, we're starting from square one. Slate clean. Just like we expected Christ, we, we want the most high God in Christ to forgive us for everything we did before we knew his understanding. Same thing, now, hey, now I know how to be a man. Now I know how to be a woman. So what we had that past, that's gone. That's the way it's supposed to be. Read on. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Old things can't be reaching back into what you did way back when. No, it's new in Christ. It's new in Christ. You got to condition your, your thought process and your mouth to that. Because that's how some relationships are conditioned to be. So when you get into it, now we're going to reach back and bring up some stuff. Because I now want to hurt your feelings. I'm going to hurt yours. And we're going to try and see who can hurt each other the most. In Christ, we can't do that. Old things passed away, we don't. Uh, behold. Behold. All things are become new. All things are new now. Those things are going away. Real quick. Go to Mark real quick. Go to go I want to back Captain up on that point. Uh, go to the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27. That's a heavy point. Um, all things become new because in the being that you have experienced, sometimes the old man will come up. That's the battle against the flesh and the spirit. Um, all things are new, and that's something that we have to retain in our in our mind. But this is the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 27 An ungodly man Diggeth up evil It says an ungodly man Diggeth up evil Something that was hidden Buried long ago An ungodly person would do what? He would dig it up evil He would bring up stuff that happened in the past Only because you have not let it go It's something that you have never gotten rid of In your spirit and You're supposed to have it to When you came into this truth All things are supposed to become new You're doing that you're ungodly. That's what the scripture says. Um, the scripture says, uh, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, it says, uh, what good do of arguing, arguing reproof? Okay, it's just a scribe with words. If this, this, this is going to be the ending of all arguments. It's supposed to. A lot of times when we get caught up in emotions, we, we argue. Like the bishop said the most, this Bible is closed. And therefore, we're going back and forth with opinions, and that's not going to solve it. What the Most High God found beautiful, which we're going to get to eventually, that a husband and a wife, that they agree together. When you agree together, those other things, both of y'all agree that that's the past. Y'all moved on from that. It's become, it, it begins to be evil when one is not agreeing with the other and saying, you know what? You remember what you did to me last, before we came into the street? Remember this stuff? You think I forgot that? that be, that's when God has a problem with it. Other than that, God is found this thing honorable. So keep it that way. Keep it that way. It says that we're like a church without spot. That's how God want to see this marriage. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, real quick, Mark 11, 24, because this is where Paul got that from. Paul didn't just make that up. He learned that from Christ. Watch this. Mark 11, verse 24. Let's start there. Mark. Through, through 26. Chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So we always need the Most High to forgive us for something. He said, and Christ will let you know the same way you want the Most High to forgive you, you better carry the same thing with your brothers and your sisters here, with your wife, with your husband. Read on. But if ye do not forget, wait a minute, I want to hold a grudge. I want to be upset. No, you know, it's just me. I, I, I don't let stuff go. No, in Christ, in order for us to get the kingdom, we got to let stuff go. We command it to forgive. It's a commandment. Read it again. But if ye do not forgive, uh -huh. neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your Read trespasses. That verse again. Neither will your Father which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. If you do not want to forgive, if you want to justify it upon any other thought, any other phrase, if you do not forgive your wife, don't forgive your husband. 
What did Christ say to what? The Father? Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So we want the most how to forgive us for five slip-ups, right? So we got to condition ourselves to forgive it, our spouse for wrongs, especially past wrongs. Um, I want to go to the uh, book of Ephesians here real quickly. Uh, Paul touched on in the book of Ephesians the roles of a, a husband and a wife. And um, we got to make sure that we, we live by these things and never forget those because we in the process of rebuilding the nation of Israel back. And when there's any schisms in the body, then there's discord. Then discord goes on down to the kids and the kids and then it, it keeps going on and we stay stuck here. So we got to be in order in our marriages, first off, so we can rebuild the nation to get up out of here. So Paul touched on the order of a man and a wife. Ephesians 5, let's start at verse 22 real quick. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as unto the Lord. Do you understand, Sister Rebecca, that whenever something comes out, out of the brother Eladar's mouth, no matter whether you like it or not, or you don't feel like it, you got a headache, you just woke up, whatever it is, God commands you to submit to that. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. All right. I'll pray. Just read on. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. Even as Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. and, he, and he is the savior of the body. The reason why the Most High gave the man and gave Eladah power, or uh, what does it say, for you to submit yourself to him, is because he's the savior of the body. The Most High is dealing with him in a different way than he is with you. Because God has a divine calling for us men is to rebuild the nation, lead his people back to the righteous state that we were supposed to be. So whatever he's telling you to do is going to be in righteousness because he's a godly man. And it says in Sirach 37 is to be continually always with the godly man. So what's coming out of his mouth is not going to be anything that's going to be detrimental or hurt you. What we have to do is remove our emotions and our feelings out of the way so we can fall in line with submitting ourselves unto our husbands. Y'all two understand that? Yes. Read on. Hold on real quick. Go ahead. I won't skip something. Hold that real quick, and I ain't going to get off of it. Hold that. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. Some sisters out there that are, that are unmarried right now, that y'all need to understand this before you get married. That's why I said so. This is why it's so important to choose the right man and prove him. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. The head of man is Christ, and the head of woman is the man. You understand that, right? Now go back to Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Right. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Now we all love Jesus, right? If Jesus came down and told us to do something, we would do it immediately, right? Read on. Even as Christ is Read the, that again. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Stop. Christ. Even as. Even as. Even as we would do it if Jesus Christ said do it, even as, what two words, even as, read on. Christ is the head of the church. Even as Christ is the head of the church, read it again. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Even as if Jesus Christ told you to do it, you wouldn't hesitate. You understand? The rest of you sisters understand? Yes, Careful when you're choosing a husband. Because remember, these are commandments that we read. So when the Lord is looking at you as women, as wives, if y'all not operating in this spirit right here, then y'all in what? Sin. Huh? Sin. Read it again. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. You understand that, sister? So, your go-to between you and the most high is who? All right. Where's it going? All right. Uh, let's pick up on verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Therefore, as the church is the subject is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. And, and Captain Judah just explained it. In everything. Read on. Now the flip side of it. 20, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, mm -hmm. even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Eladah, what does it mean? In the context of marriage, to love your wife. What are your duties as a husband to love her? Meaning, I have to deal with her according to God's word. Right? Exactly right. Give me a little more, though. Um, I have to love her as I love myself. Um, I wouldn't um, put her in a position where she's going to break God's laws. Right? Exactly right. It also goes into, you got to build her up in God's laws. Just because God's dealing with us in a certain way don't mean that they shouldn't have a certain level of understanding to where if they out on the streets, they can defend themselves in the word of God. That first Peter 3.15, when it says be ready to give an answer, it ain't got no gender on that. It don't just say the man be ready. It's also for the woman, too. So it's going to be your job as her being your possession now. You've got to build her up. That's a part of loving her. So she can understand how to defend herself out there in the streets. So she can be able to process these laws and, and stuff through her own mind to where whatever feelings and emotions may come into play, these scriptures start coming in. And that's going to be your job. Whether it's giving her some reading assignments or some tests weekly, asking her what does that mean, how would you explain it to a sister, that's going to be your job. All right. um, let's go back, read that verse again. Verse 25. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also. Stop. Read it again. Husbands, love your wives, even as. Even as. It's for you. Even as. Read. Christ also loved the church. Even as Christ loved the church, what did Christ do for us? He died for our sins. He died for us. We wasn't even worthy of it. He died for us. So that means if Christ could do that for us, then you better be willing to take care of this woman. You better be willing to give yourself for this woman. You better be ready to put her above your own wants and do what she needs done. You understand what that means? Yes, sir. Now I'm going to address you brothers that are going to take wives or some of you that are already married. That means you don't treat your wives unrighteously. You don't leave your wives out there on a limb while you're comfortable. You sacrifice yourself for your wife, even as Christ died and sacrificed himself for us. Do y'all understand? Okay, Captain. Uh, I get go to. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please. Back up what the captain just said. Read that verse again. Uh, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Also, two things I want to address. I'm going to deal with this point. After, uh, first point I want to deal with, like uh, I believe Captain Ryman mentioned, having your wife get the understanding that you have that way she, she's able to back up herself when somebody asks her a question what she believe because we had an example of when we had a brother in this troop and knowing Ephraim Ephraim just wanted the trace period they're close to their family okay that's 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 one of the biggest thing within you uh, we had a brother here and his wife was always surrounded by her family and she listened to the, whenever something went down in the house, she went right back into the family instead of going, instead of going to the men that knew the word of God and was able to give her counsel. She went to her family 
pulled her right out of the world, got her children to celebrate Christmas. The man got weak and followed her right along. Now both of them, are ba both atheists asked me before they came in. Now smoking cigarettes and all that stuff back in the world. You have to give her the answers that she needs because the family is going to come at her before they come at you because they're going to think you got her under cult. They're always going to attack the woman first. So make sure she understands her faith just as well as you understand yours that, she gave to, that she's able to offend herself. Defend herself, excuse me. Y'all know my uh, uh, rule in speech. Uh, she's able to defend herself, correct? Okay. So read verse 25 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now backing up what Captain Judah said. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for. No man should, in, should uh, have this spirit to where they don't show charity. I mean, we, we all do it. You know, I myself, I just, just go for myself excluded. We don't understand half the time what women go through. I experienced that. My wife was out a couple of days. I had to deal with Serena and, and Thais. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember I was supposed to meet Trua here at the school. I forgot that I was supposed to meet the sister here. She had the phone. I'm telling you, I, oh, I can't even explain what I'm going through. I'm just leaving like that. I called him. Oh man. Back to what I was just saying. It was just too much. But the women go through a lot, especially when the childbirth, you know. Things that men don't understand, you know, they gotta, they gotta be merciful to, to women. They, they're the weaker vessels, there's a reason why God is saying that. The, woman, the man is supposed to understand, likewise the women, supposed to understand charity. You gotta have some type of, uh, uh, you gotta have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You gotta understand each other, be in one mind. There's no way your wife, compassion, mercy, okay? Just like Christ loved the church, Christ had compassion. We all slip. Christ told the man that you, you forgive your brother seven times, even seven times to seven. Christ showed that example to his disciples. Have compassion for one another. A lot of brothers get into this mindset where they think they're going to have camp inside of their house. That is not the men uh, of the Lord. That, that, that's not the man of the Lord. You ain't supposed to be having camp inside of your house. Woman, do this. You do that. That's not how the disciples wrote. Marriage was honorable. You live joyfully with the wife of thy youth. That's what the scripture said. Bishop also gave the example. A man came in his truth and said, I'm done with the toilet, go flush the toilet. Because he misunderstood a woman must be subjection to her husband in all things. That means all things in righteousness. That's what it's talking about. Don't, don't y'all get that uh, misunderstood. A lot of brothers come in here, want leadership, want, want, want the titles and all that stuff. They want to be open. They want to uh, exhaust their authority. Do not do that. Don't come in with that spirit. Okay, you're supposed to show love to your companion. God set it up for you to disrespect what God gave you. You saying God made a mistake. Why did you give her to me? I'm disrespecting what you gave me. You understand that? You're being disrespectful to God when you're being disrespectful to your spouse. Everybody, is, am I making myself clear on that? Right. So the scripture says, "Be uh, charity. You got to show charity." And that goes for brotherly love, and that goes for sisters as well. No gossiping one towards one another. God set y'all up together to be one flesh. That's what it's about. Show charity. And I'm speaking to some, and those who know what I'm talking about. Hold what you got, officer. I'm going to get back to you. Go to First Peter. This is just going to go off with the captain just brought out. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them, dwell with your wife according to the knowledge of the Bible. How God says to treat it. Because the definition of loving each other, loving your neighbor as yourself, is that we keep God's commandments. So you deal with her according to God's commandments. Read on. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And remember, God deals with you different than he deals with her. It's certain emotional stuff that she's going to go through, and you're going to have to learn how to navigate through it, navigate around it, don't run from it. You understand? Yes. Read on. And as being heirs together. As being what? As heirs together. As being what? As heirs together. We in this together. That's you right there. That's you right there. We in this together. Don't ever get in the spirit, and any of your other brothers, don't ever get in the spirit to where we already in captivity, 
and your wife is in a double captivity because she got to come home and be captive under you. Right. You understand? Yes. You're supposed to obey him according to God's word. And it says, remember her as the weaker vessel, giving honor. Not putting her in captivity, making her uh, a, a, a just flat out maid servant to yourself. Dealing with her unjustly as a lion in your house. But remember, y'all heirs together. Christ is dealing with her also. Maybe not dealing with you the same way, but he's dealing with her. Just like some of us are going to be teachers, other, others of us men, we're going to be have the spirit of exhortation. Others, we, some of us, we just going to have the spirit of, of, of giving. Or, all of that's important. We all one body. Heirs together. In Christ's eyes, we all one. In Christ's eyes, y'all two are one. In the most eyes, eyes y'all one. So don't ever, you brothers, don't put your, your wife in the spirit of she's in a, a whole nother captivity outside of this Babylonian captivity that we're in right now. Read on. As heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. What that's talking about, if you ain't dealing with your, with your wife right, he's hindered, you're hindering your prayers. Right. The things that you ask for from the most high, you can't deal with her right, your prayers are handed. Until you, in other words, until you get that thing right, the most I ain't gonna deal with you on what you asked him for. You understand? Yes. Sir. All right, to go. Um, last scripture for me here is in Tobit eight. Going back to that, um, what Captain's bringing out, the heirs together, the heirs together. Um, after this past Sabbath, we got a whole another outlook or understanding of what it means to be together. So with that being said, we're going to read what our forefather understood here. Tobit chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 5. The book of Tobit chapter 8, verse 5. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God our Father, and blessed is the holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou madest Abba, Adam, and gave it to him, Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. That's your role, Sister Rebecca. You're a helper and a stay to the brother Eladon. So he can raise up his son Isaiah in righteousness to be a mighty prophet of the Most High. So he can teach your daughters what a man of God looks like so they know what it, to how to look for a husband when it comes their time. So it's your job to be a helper and stay to show them what a righteous woman looks like, a daughter of Sarah. And his job to show them what a man of God looks like, and also Isaiah. Read on. Thou made his Adam and gave him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, It is not good that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. Make an aid like unto himself. Now jump back to Tobit chapter 6. Verse 12. And the maid is fair and wise. Mm -hmm. Now therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return from rags, we will celebrate the marriage. For I know that Ragul cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses. But he shall be guilty of death, because the right of inheritance doth rather appertain to thee than unto another. Read on. Verse 13. Then the oh, young jump to verse 17. Verse 17. And the devil and the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again anymore. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you, and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. From the beginning. That's going off of what Captain was talking about, heirs together. I know we here in the physical, we living in 2015, but the Most High is a mastermind. He's on a whole nother level. You two have been mercifully ordained heirs together from the beginning. What's happening now is that you're just finding each other again at whatever time it was, and you're coming back together again. You two have always been together throughout the ages. As many times as the Most High has put us here, you two have always found each other. So with that thought, give me Proverbs 5 and 18. 
That's a heavy thing to understand that this woman has always been with you. You have always been with him. Y'all two was made for each other. Read that when you get it, 5 and 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed mm -hmm. and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So with you two being mercifully ordained together from the beginning, enjoy each other. That's right. Enjoy one another's company. The reason why y'all are even thinking about uh, being connected together for the rest of your life is because you enjoy each other. So don't get ever have the mindset of where you let the cares of Esau start to bog you down and then you take him out on her. Or you let the frustrations of being a mother handling 20 different things at one time and you take him out on him. The scriptures say you rejoice with the wife of your, your youth because y'all two was mercifully ordained together from the beginning. Go back to Toby real quick in uh, Toby chapter 8 and we're going to read verse... Uh, seven. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 7. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, mm -hmm. but upright. So now understand that you two was mercifully ordained together from the beginning. You take her upright, not for just sex. You brothers, listen to this too. You don't pick a wife just for um, her physical attributes. That's not why we pick a wife. You pick a wife because the most high moves your spirit towards that woman, then you prove her, and then you do what you have to. You come here what the brother Eladah is doing, and you make it right in the eyes of God. Read on. Therefore, Therefore mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. That's what you gotta remember. So now that you understand y'all two have found each other once again in this life, enjoy each other so you can become aged together. It's one thing that I always understand, I always think to myself, when I'm when the most high calls my number, I do not want to be on that on my deathbed with a, a life full of terrible memories. Cause it ain't nothing else you taking with you. Once he, if he sends you back, if you have that chance to come back in the third and fourth generation, he's gonna wipe you clean. You won't remember him. But while you're here and you remembering all the things you've done in your life, let those be joyful thoughts that you live the upright and merciful life. And read the next part, verse 9, or verse 8. Verse 8, and she said with him, amen. She was in agreement with that. Let me become aged with this man. Let you become aged with other die. Enjoy each other. All right? You know, to understand that? Yes. Okay, real quick, I want to get on something real quick. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. Deal with a couple things and then we're going we're gonna to wrap it up and start enjoying ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. To me. So nevertheless... <laughs> To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. It'd be good if you brothers can, can refrain from touching a woman, but God said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, because most of us can't avoid that. Most, most of us can't refrain from being with a woman. That's why it says that it's good that a man not shouldn't be alone. It's not good that a man should be alone. Most of us understand how he made us. Some of us have a special blessing where we can't, you know, we don't need a woman. Not me. Read that last one again. Verse 2. Verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. To avoid you having to do stuff like look on the internet for stuff you ain't got no business looking at. To avoid you being a whoremonger, running around, chasing tail all over the place. Let every man have his own wife. So marriage is a beautiful thing. Because you don't have to worry about that. Your needs are fulfilled by your wife. Read. And let every woman have her own husband. And to avoid your sisters having to go through that, because y'all go through it like we do, even though y'all hide it better. Let every woman have her own husband. Read. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And let the husband render to the wife due benevolence. Meaning she's going to have needs, and you're going to have to meet them. You're going to have to fulfill them. 
whether you like to and whether you don't, whether you're mad, or whether you're angry, or whether you're tired, or whether you're sleepy, or whether you didn't work too much, or whatever, you're going to have to fulfill their needs. And y'all figure that out. That's for y'all to figure it out. Read on. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. So that means you can't get mad at them and act like, I ain't doing nothing with you. Leave me alone and roll over and you sleep on the couch and get all that old nonsense. You can't do it. You understand? Why you look at him like that? Hey, you guilty. You can't do that. Read that part again. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. That means y'all gotta take care of each other. And not only uh, emotionally, but physically. You understand? To avoid fornication. To keep him from looking somewhere else. To keep her from thinking something else. To keep that devil from in between y'all two. Render unto each other through benevolence. Read on. The wife hath not power of her own body. You are not yours, you are his. You understand? You got one flesh. So when he has needs, that means you got needs. Whether you think you need it or you don't. Read on. But the husband, and likewise also the husband, hath not power of his own body. So when she got needs, that means you got needs because you got one flesh. You ain't got power over yourself. If she need it, you need it. You understand? I ain't gonna get into depth like hell or anything. Uh, but you understand what I'm talking about. Yes. All right, read on. Verse five. Defraud ye not one the other. Ex don't hold out. Read. Except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not. So that means even regardless of the day, regardless of what's going on, uh, whether it be on the Sabbath or whatever, you guys belong to each other. If y'all have needs, y'all have to meet those needs. The only time y'all don't come together is when y'all, excuse me, is when y'all fasting and y'all consent that we're going to fast. So in other words, I'm going to get something real quick. Go to Numbers. I'll show you how important this is. Go to Numbers. Hold on, let me find it. Chapter 30. And verse 2. Read through. Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. This is for you more than for him. All right? If, Read. A, if a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his sword, or break his word, he shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall and her father shall hold his peace in her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. And the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all an husband, when she vowed, or uttered out, out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which he vowed, which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect and the Lord shall forgive her okay you saying something even if, it's, if you, you think it's between you and the most high and he don't agree with it God avoid that out according to his 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 mind you understand according to your husband you vow vow to God and he says no nah, I don't agree with that father don't listen to her according to this God said okay I'll forgive her of that whatever be quiet in other words like we said between you and the Most High is Him, as long as He's in the Spirit. You understand that? So go back to that, um, except for the prayer and fasting. First, First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, 
that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. That means except that he consents with you. In other words, don't be like, I'm fasting, leave me alone. You understand? Because sisters be, be slick with it. They'd be mad, I'm fasting now. I decided to start fasting. Get out from me. According to the scriptures, you can't touch me. Nah. He can say, nah, you ain't fasting. The time has come. <laughs> All right. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. <laughs> Verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Brothers, listen up. Read that again. But if any provide not for his own, if you don't provide for your household, if you don't take care of your wife, take care of your children, take care of yours, read on. Especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. That means that you do not believe. Read. And is worse than an infidel. You worse than a non-believer. The most I don't look at you as you're in the truth. If you're comfortable with not taking care of your household, then you are worse than a non-believer in the, in the eyesight of God. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Christ died for us. The least you can do is get a damn job and take care of your family. Everybody understand? He has a job, you're just saying. Make sure everybody's working. Yeah, I know you got a job, right? Yes, I do. All praises. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go back to the uh, total real quick. We're going to end it with this one, and then we're going to send up and send the praise. You got some more? Go ahead, Captain. Go ahead. Real quick. Real quick, um, first Corinthians, I'm sorry. Chapter 7, verse 25, 28, I'm sorry. 28. First Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 28. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. But, and if a virgin marry, she hath not seen. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Read that part again. But, and if thou marry, nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm sorry. nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. So, when Paul was breaking this down about marriage, and you said trouble in the flesh, what is that talking about? Uh, being that me and my wife are one flesh, uh, we'll both have trouble um, amongst each other. Make a plan. Not sure. Brothers, troubles in the flesh mean what? You're going to fuss and fight. Fussing and fighting, disagreement, okay. argument. Okay. That's going to happen. The sun bears a lot, <laughs> but it's going to happen. So, once again, we learn how to deal with that, right? Let's, when you when you fussing and fighting, you got a disagreement, all that stuff is verbal, right? You use words. If you're upset about something, it's verbally expressed. If she's upset about something, it's verbally expressed. Just want to give you um, some quick scriptures on that. Because in our repentance, we got to discipline our mouth. Men first, it start with us. Then the woman follows suit. Um, Sirach 5, give me verse 13. Sirach chapter 5, verse 13. Honor and shame is in talk. So we got to understand that with our mouth, we can either bless somebody, or with our mouth, we can destroy somebody's spirit. Even in the midst of troubles in the flesh, I'm upset about whatever the case may be. On either side, we got to make sure what's coming out of our mouth, honor or shame. A lot of times when it's trouble in the flesh, it's shame. <laughs> it's coming out of it. But we have to discipline ourselves to, in the same breath where things are going on to get back to some peace between each other. It says, read the verse again. Honor and shame is in talk. Uh -huh. And the tongue of man is his fall. And the tongue of a man is his fall. So we have to, as men, first, it begins and ends with us. We have to be able to discipline our mouth and shut stuff like that down. Um, Sirach, jump to Sirach real quick, one more scripture. Um, verse 19. Um, Sirach chapter 19, verse 16. 
Sirach chapter 19, verse 16. There is one that slippeth in speech, in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? So guess what? Even, even now, y'all still don't slip up and say something that would offend her, offend him. Right? That's going to happen. So when that happens, that can't be the end of the world. It can't be, well, wait a minute, your sister can't believe you said it to me. Oh, no. As we, we touched on earlier, we have to be merciful. We have to be long-suffering. We have to be pitiful. Y'all join us together. You gotta be patient with each other. All right, I'll read it again. There is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. Read it again. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? So understand, it, the, it will happen that you will slip with your tongue. But being a righteous man, righteous sister, you should be able to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Admit that it was a slip, not justified behind anything, and move on from that. Y'all clear on that? That'd be a big thing that we deal with. That when it's troubles in the flesh, he said this, and I can't believe he said that. She said this, can't believe he said that. And it's like the end of the world. It can't be that way. We gotta be merciful towards one another. So, everybody understand what we're doing. This is a beautiful thing right now, that we're doing this and we rehearse the righteous acts according to uh, Judges 5 and 11. We rehearse the righteous acts and we come together and celebrate each other's marriages. And hopefully we're going to see other young sisters and brothers get married and we do this thing even bigger and even better. Um, but it's important for us to come together like this and support each other. We know y'all been together. As far as God's concerned, y'all was already married. But being in this truth, we understand what y'all want to come together and do it uh, according to the spirit now. And get the instruments and covenant and whatnot, do all that under God. Uh, and under the witnesses of your brothers and sisters. We all gonna pray that y'all stay together, that y'all endure, and now that y'all continue being one flesh. You deal with her according to the scriptures, you deal with him according to the scriptures, and everything will be okay. And you got a wide support system right here. You understand? Yes. Don't do anything according to your own heart because your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You understand that? So is yours. When you get upset with him, and he tells you something that you don't want to do or something you don't want to submit to, your best bet is to remember the scripture saying all things and everything as unto the Lord. Because that way you know that you cover yourself and you're right with God. Now, if he's messed up in the way that he's dealing with you, God's going to judge him. You understand? But your job is to obey him in every, anything that he tells you aside from sin. You understand? So saying that you understand, you got all the witnesses that hear that you understand. If y'all get into something, you just treat them and you you going off on your own thing, then you got the devil on you. You understand? So if somebody sees that, the counsel comes up later on and be like, you got the devil on you. Don't get mad, bug out, and blank, I ain't coming back to the church. Just remember what you said, what you confessed to, and fix it. Scripture. Thou madest Adam and gave us him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make him unto him an aid like unto himself. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly, therefore mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. And she said with him, Amen. And they said both of them together, Amen. So like in verse 8, you both repeat it together. And she said, with him, Aman. Aman. Okay, all praises to the most high. Yep. Yeah, you can read that. All right, Tobit chapter 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him and called Etna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. You know, y'all, y'all were emotional about this time. Get it on time.
Oh! Hey, 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 I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.